This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this uh, 2023 Salem Platinum Edition. Model number 31KQ BTS. Okay, so this is not a floor plan video, it's a how to video, so I'm going to just walk you around and show you some of the features. Okay. Um, obviously, there's a grill underneath here, and just keep in mind you have to plug the grill into this quick connect LP fitting here. One, one end of the hose, the LP hose goes to the back of the grill, and then the other one goes to that one I just showed you under the trailer, and here's the hose itself. So you have a quick connect and a, a male end on it. Okay? Alrighty. You have your quick drop uh, stabilizer jacks. Of course, you have running water out here and a refrigerator, and like I said, the, the, uh, uh, the grill swings right around. You have a power awning with LED strip. You have outside speakers. Some power here. You have a, um, a vent here for your range hood fan. So if you can use the fan in the range hood, remember there's a baffle in there and you just stick your thumb there and pop it loose so the baffle flaps freely when you're venting. Otherwise you can just keep it shut. But if you're venting, you want that baffle flapping freely. Okay. This right here is just the, the fill for your fresh water tank. The most common way to get water to the trailer is the city water fill, right? Um, or the city water hookup, I should say. If you're camping somewhere, you're boondocking, or you're someplace without city water, you can pre-fill this tank. And then when you get to the campground, you can use the onboard pump to pump the water. Everything will work as though you have city water, you'll just be pumping from the tank. So um, I'll, uh, I'll show you the switches for that when we get inside. And this is the drain for your fresh water tank right there, that white gate valve there, okay? Furnace vent. This is your water heater here. Let me just put this out of the way for a second. So, this runs on either 110 AC or LP gas. Um, Never run it or turn on the LP gas or the electricity without water in the tank itself, right? Um, behind here, this cover covers a, a heating element, uh, 110 AC heating element, and it's controlled by this rocker switch right here, on and off, right? Then there, inside the trailer, there's going to be a switch for the gas valve also. So um, keep in mind that, uh, uh, you know, you use, people usually drain it when they're not camping. That's pretty typical. So if you do drain it by, by pulling this plug slash anode rod out, it takes an inch and a sixteen six point socket. Um, if you do do that, just make sure you refill the tank before you turn it on. When you put the plug back in, you got to make sure that you refill the tank before you run it. Otherwise, you could damage it. So you, can, you never run it without water in it. Okay. All right. You got a hitch with this one, a Husky centerline weight distribution hitch with built-in sway control. We'll show you how that operates when you pick up. Uh, that is your stabilizer crank right there. And the, the silver crank is for your, uh, your power tongue jack. So you have a power tongue jack with a light on it. But if it fails for any reason, you can pull this plug, right? put that crank on there and you can crank it manually to get yourself hitched and unhitched. So you can always get hitched and unhitched no matter what. Uh, and then you have a solar panel on this one. So this is your controller. This is perfect to show you this. See it says F-U-L and it's flashing. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's what's happening. That's just telling you, it's not broke, that's just telling you that there's no more storage left in the battery. So it shut the panel off. As soon as the, the DC powered level the amps drop in the battery it'll go right back to the normal mode you know the only the only button you have to worry about is this one in the upper right hand corner and um it'll go from 13.7 volts right now that's what's in it poke it again and it'll tell you how many amps you're gaining from the sun poke it again and it'll tell you the amp hours in your storage and poke it again you'll be back to 13.7 so it tells you gives you three readings Right now, it's not giving you those because you, it's shut down because it's totally charged. 
So as soon, like I said, as soon as the power level drops, your, your amp level goes down, it'll uh, it'll go back to normal function. So this is the only button you worry about, upper right hand corner. It's telling you right here it's totally charged, and right there it's totally charged. So okay, just keep just keep that in mind. That's your solar controller. So you have two LP tanks full. You have your power tongue jack we talked about. You have a deep cycle marine battery right here. And uh, this is the kill switch for the battery. So if you want to shut the battery off when you're in storage or whatever, you can always just shut it, shut it off right there for any reason. Your power cord is right here. It's, um, it's a 30 foot cord. And also, let me make sure here. Here, so give you good information. Yeah, so this is a 30 amp, 30 foot cord. Okay. So here we go past your slide rooms. This is your, um, these are your dump valves here. The black one is toilet water and waste. It's this in this case it has a black, they have a black and gray handle. But if it didn't. The larger valve, the three inch valve, is always the black tank, and the one and a half inch valve is always uh, toilet or I mean, always um, sink and shower water. So um, the black tank is toilet water and waste, the gray is sink and shower water. Okay? Alrighty. So, this is your city water hookup right here. This is the most common way to get water to the trailer, right? This here, this one here is your black tank flush. So after you dump your black tank, if you leave the valve open, it states here on this sticker here, leave the valve open, you hook the hose of the dump station onto here, turn on the water, it'll spray out the inside of your black tank, clean off the sensors, that sort of thing. So it's a really good thing to use. As long as they've got a working hose at the dump station, I highly recommend it. Uh, this is just our shop cord hooked up to it now. I showed you your power cord, which is in the front compartment. Okay. This tells us that you're pre-wired for a backup camera. It takes a Furion backup camera kit if you're interested. And it also has a, it's also pre, got a pre-hookup for a, a, a Lippert ladder system you can put on there. Okay. So we're back here to where we started with the, with the drill. This, this swings out, obviously. You pull, pull these pins and it swings out and it'll swing way over by here so you can have it over here when you're cooking. Okay. All right, so let's go inside. Okay. So when we come in the door, first of all, this is your your dimmer. So that's you turn you turn on the light just by rubbing your thumb over it. You also have switches here. Um, you have your uh, awning and uh, and the LED strip. So this is the awning button here. So you can see. This goes like that. Very simple. Never leave it out unattended if you're not going to be at the campsite. Roll it in. Your slide room switch here. I told you you can pump water out of the fresh water tank. That's that switch right there. You also use this to winterize the trailer. And to light your water heater on gas, you have this one here. There's the fault light up there. And there's the switch. So that's how you light it on gas. Remember I showed you the electrical switch is outside in the lower left hand corner. Never run the water here without water in it. And then your levels, your batteries charged, fresh water, so on and so forth. It goes up in one third increments. Your keys are right here. Okay, so your uh, microwave works like any other microwave. This is your range hood. Remember I told you about it has a fan and a light. Remember I told you that uh, you want that baffle open if you're going to be venting to the outside. Okay, your range, you have a sparker here, turn it clockwise to spark, then you have the three knobs for the three burners, and the last one is for the oven. Okay, so I don't know if he's got the gas on here, let me see. Yep, so it's that simple. Um, now when it comes to the oven, all the way at the back and the bottom is a pilot light. I don't know if you can see it doing its thing there, apparently not. So um, basically you're going to go to the knob. You go to the picture of the pilot light, then you depress it. You keep it depressed. You light the pilot light back there. After it lights, you hold this in for another 10 or 15 seconds to heat up the thermocouple. Then you go to operating temperature. Okay, so when you shut it off, the flame goes out, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. 
We also have a blue light and an oven light here. Never travel. This is open. Always make sure it's shut. You have a um, 12 volt DC refrigerator and freezer. This device here is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should always be green. If it's not uh, green, get it serviced. Um, if it goes off, it's detected carbon monoxide or LP gas. So you take everybody outside, shut the appliances off, leave the door open, shut off the gas, figure out what's going on, okay? Behind here are your, uh, are your winterizing valves, or some of them here, probably the, I would think this one's probably the water pump in the inlet for the antifreeze, okay? Um, let me look a little farther for you here. Yeah, and the, I don't hit, I have a light on me, but the, you can't see very well, but the valves for the back, on the back of your water heater are right down there. So, right now it's in camping mode, I believe. Okay. Okay, um, while we're still in this room, this, this is, your TV will hook up to here, and this green LED tells us that the signal booster for the digital antenna is on, so... That's what you, uh, that's the way you want it. If you don't, if it's shut off, you won't get a good picture. So this, this soundbar plays FM radio. It's got a USB drive on it. HDMI in. If you're going to go into the system with a Blu-ray player or something, you know. Um, it has Bluetooth, so you can stream wirelessly from your phone to your tablet. Two speaker zones, one and two. One is inside the trailer, two is outside the trailer. Okay. And, uh, this is the remote for that right here this uh, remote is for the fireplace right here so let me see if I can there's a, quite a glare right now I don't know if I can show you everything that's happening but you can change the fan speed right here you can feel it really kicking now um, you have a next one over as a timer you can set the timer you can also change the colors here you got blue, uh, blue crystals, clear crystals, and then the next one changes your picture of your fire, the color of your fire. Now it's blue with white crystals, so you can mess with it. There's also buttons right here. You don't have to use the uh, the remote. You can do it here also. Okay. Of course, if you add a TV, it goes right here. There's a backer plate there for a bracket. Okay. Now this this section here of this of the sofa. It jack knives flat so you can turn it into a bed. This one here, you can drop the poles out and set the tabletop onto these cleats and fill in the space with the back cushions and you have another bed here. This piece can come completely out and you have all sorts of um, combinations you can do. So um, uh, it's very versatile. Um, let's see where else we're at here. Okay, so the sink and the shower work like any other sink and shower. Uh, you have a vent fan here and a skylight there. The toilet, like all RV tra travel trailer toilets, sits right over the um, right over a black tank. And there's the flush pedal right there. Okay. So what you do, you can't use it dry. By dry, I'm talking about the black tank. So when you pull into the campground, you hook up your power and your water. You'll come in here. You'll put a dose of chemical in the bowl. Then you'll step on the pedal. If you find, and water will come swirling out. And you stand on it long enough to put at least a gallon of water in there along with the chemical. Then it's ready to be used. If you don't do that, it's considered using it dry. And what will happen is, first of all, it'll, it'll get clogged up. Second of all, it'll smell really, really bad. So you always need chemical and water in the black tank before you start using it. Okay? Alrighty. So, this is just your thermostat here. You just hit the mode button to light it up and then you'll poke through the, the different modes. Um, okay, so this bottom panel folds down into a bed, and this top one will fold down into a bed, and you can take this couch and fold it out, so you have four potential places to sleep here. So you got four sleepers here, and two in the main room, kind of auxiliary, and of course your bedroom up front. Uh, now, this is your power converter, right? So, what this does... This, first of all, it converts AC to DC power. 
So you start with 110 AC here, as long as you're plugged into shore power. So you got 110 AC circuit breakers like you'd see at home, and they're labeled, right? Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC over here, so you got 12 volt fuses, and they're labeled, right? That's where the 12 volt comes from. Now, this is also a battery tender, so it's going to sense how much energy your battery up front on the tongue needs, and it'll send as many amps up there as necessary to keep it charged, okay? So, basically, when you're plugged into shore power, this will be charging your battery. When you're pulling down the road, your um, uh, tow vehicle's alternator and charge line will be charging the battery, and in between that, the solar panel is always going to be sending amps to the battery, uh, depending on the, the, the uh, conditions outside. Um, and right now, like I said, it's completely charged, so there's no room to store anything else. Uh, so it's flashing, F-U-L, and flashing right now. But like I said, once you start using it, that'll drop and it'll, it'll kick on the panel, and you'll see you'll be able to punch the upper right-hand button on your solar controller. You'll be able to poke it and uh, go through the different readouts. Okay. So three ways to charge your battery. Okay, these are the switches for your your uh, um, your bunks. Now I have this in the up position. You can't bring this one in with it down, or it'll it'll hit the other one. So always have this folded up when you're when you're moving it in and out. Um, otherwise, everything else is good. Make sure the drawers or the doors, on, I should say the doors on your cabinets here are shut so they don't get squished. Other than that, it's in pretty, pretty good shape. So just make sure that that's in the up position when you bring them in. Uh, these are, like I said, these are the two controllers for your two uh, bunk room slide outs. Okay. So, we come up here. So basically, um, you have some storage under the bed, which is typical, right? You have, um, let's see what else we've got here. You got hookups for a TV and a backer plate here, so you can put a bracket up there and watch TV while you're laying down. Uh, you have the emergency escape window right here. Uh, you can always escape here, push it all the way through, grab a hold of the red tab, pull the screen out, and you can always get out of here in an emergency. Okay, like I said, storage underneath here. You also have all, all the windows you either have a shade or some of them have a blind. The kitchen one has a blind, I believe. Okay. All right, so let me look around, make sure I didn't forget anything. That's your smoke detector there. I think we got it all. Let me just make sure. Yes? Okay. Okay, so I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Um, remember, the manufacturer states you should inspect the roof every, uh, every 60, 90 days. Uh, so someone has to go up on the roof and look around. You're just protecting your investment, basically. So you go up there and um, you look at the sealant, make sure there's no cracking or separation where water can get through. Look at the roofing material and roofing attachments, make sure none of them were damaged by, um, let's say, low branches or road debris. You're just, just to staying ahead of any potential problems. Inspecting your roof should be part of your regular maintenance. So make sure you do that and uh, right now there there's no antifreeze in the system. It's been replaced um, uh, The antifreeze has been pla replaced with fresh water the water heater is in camping mode right now, and it's full So you're all set remember do not run the water heater without water in the tank. Okay. Thank you